Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. My name is Bethany. I'm Ken. And today we are ranking Guardians of the Galaxy. My fiance and I, we score and rank all our favorite nerd movies, and we're starting with the Marvel Universe, the MCU. What we do is we basically take a guy's and a girl's perspective. So we dissect what we think is important to this particular type of movie, being a Marvel movie, um, what matters to both of us, and then basically how it comes across to both of us. Yeah, and we do that by developing a scoring sheet. It's the most scientific way to arbitrarily score a film. Now on to our review for Guardians of the Galaxy. First up is lead male and lead female likability. So our lead male in this is Peter Quill, also known as Star-Lord. Our lead female is Gamora. Peter Quill, Star-Lord? I gave him a four. I want this guy in my group of friends. He's got a great sense of humor, he listens to great music, and he's willing to sacrifice himself for his friends when Gamora's out there in space, and he goes out there and puts his little mask on her, even though he knows that it's probably gonna die in a couple seconds. I kind of wonder if he would have done that for any of his friends, or if it happens to be because it fell to the girl and his love interest. That so he he's chivalrous, such... like, that's not a good thing to, to have for my friends. I want my friends to be chivalrous as well. Let's be honest. He's a bit arrogant, he's a bit cavalier, yeah. and he's not exactly been all noble with the ladies in the past. No, he hasn't been all noble with the ladies in the past. And so that's why I think that, you know, this movie, he really, sh this moment shows his change and shows that, you know, he is capable of more and having a deeper relationship. And you know what? I think that, good on you, Peter Quill, all right? I give Peter Quill a score of two, which is, oh. I think he'd be great to grab a beer with. I think he'd be great to shut down a bar with. But I can't believe you put Thor in Thor the Dark World, some mopey, whiny, grunty person, as someone that you want in your circle of friends, all right? That's why Captain America and Black Widow are going to be in my circle of friends from Winter Soldier. Because you got Peter Quill, we're having a good time, and you can go hang out with Thor and Jane Foster. I didn't say Jane Foster would be my friends. Oh, you always bring his girlfriend. So for Gamora, I gave her a three. She's a badass in this one, all right? It really brought enjoyment for the movie for me to be able to watch such a strong female lead. Um, somebody who's not to be trifled with, who's not a damsel, who's not a prop, but who is a badass on her own mission, who happens to get linked up into this band of misfits, but she had her own agenda. Um, so for that reason, I gave her a score of three. Lead male, lead female, bang ability. Peter Quill, great guy, you know, I'll be his wingman, but I will not bang him, so he gets a zero from me. And for me with Peter Quill, I said, you know, he gets a score of three. He could probably teach me a thing or two. I mean, he's very braggadocious in the beginning, so we know he's experienced. For Gamora, I gave her a two. Uh, you know, she's, she's hot, but I don't see enough of her personality in this one. So I couldn't really give her higher than that. For me, she gets a zero. I think she's great in the badass category and I would love to hang out with her. I just don't want to bang her. Our next category is lead male, lead female relatability. So Gamora's a badass and she's super sexy, but I do not find her relatable at all. So I gave her a score of zero. Again, doesn't detract from how awesome she is as a character, how much I enjoy watching her in this movie. I just not exactly seeing myself in her. For Peter Quill, I gave him a score of two. I said, it's not me, but it could be one of my friends or family. Or it could be your fiance, because I gave him a three. I thought that, you know, the best qualities of me are in Peter Quill. Uh, my exceptional taste in music, my brilliant humor, my braggadocious, but in a cute way nature. So are you Iron Man or are you Star-Lord? I'm Star-Lord. I'm more Star-Lord than, than I am Iron Man, because, you know, I don't know if Tony Stark, I mean, I like ACDC and everything like Tony Stark does. But, I mean, I think I need more than one character. I didn't say this is just me. I said it's the best parts of me. Well, I don't know. You just identified yourself as him because you said, or he's your fiancé. So I'm just saying, like, I should probably know who I'm marrying. I thought I was marrying Iron Man. No, you're not marrying Iron Man, all right? You're marrying me, okay? You're not marrying Star-Lord. You're not marrying Iron Man. You're not marrying Captain America. You are marrying me. I know. It's sad. So next up is the villain. And our villain in this is Ronan. So Ronan's end goal is to destroy Xandar. Um, he hates Sardarian culture. And, uh, you know, he wants to, wants to kill all of them. How many people does this angle affect? I gave it a three. Once he gets the Infinity Stone, for me, that changes everything. And I think it becomes a universe's health and happiness is at stake. Um, so that actually bumps his score up to a five. Really? So, if a homicidal maniac gets a hold of an Infinity Stone, then it's a five. The world, the universe's health and happiness is at risk. Okay, where That's are you going That's very interesting with this? because in Thor, the Dark World, Malekith, gets a, an Infinity Stone, and his whole goal is to put the universe in darkness. And she's like, well, it fucks maybe like one or two worlds. As soon as you have somebody who is a homicidal psychopath in possession of an Infinity Stone, the game changes. 
all of a sudden Malekith isn't a lunatic. Like, he seems a little pretty level-headed, all right? I think that, you know, he's gonna put the world in darkness, but it's gonna, it's gonna look nice. You have something against elves. You think that elves can't be terrorizing. And so, you know, you just think they're, they're, make, they're making cookies and trees. I don't think they're Keebler elves. I think they live in Rivendell. How strong is the villain compared to the hero? I gave him a four. It's the highest rank. He's significantly stronger than the heroes. And this is even without the Infinity Stone. I don't find Ronin to be all that terrifying without the Infinity Stone. Because uh, let's face it, in large part, he sits on a throne sending everybody else to go kick butt on his behalf. He rarely ever gets his hands dirty. He whoops Drax's ass. He just what mops the floor with him. It's like he's not even trying. However, when he gets the Infinity Stone, he's the one wielding the weapon. He's the one on the front lines of his own cause. So he becomes a different villain for me. I said that he's a score of three. He's stronger than the heroes. Do you care about the villain? I only care about him in the respect of, I want our heroes to win. So he is a score of one. When he's holding up Drax and he's saying how he remembers killing his family and like how pathetic they were. Oh man, I hate that guy. And I, he got a three. Villain bang ability. He gets a zero. This category is just here for Loki and you've already, you've already banged Loki. You already got that out of your system. So from here on out, who knows which villain's gonna I get did, that. I did and then he killed Coulson and just ruined everything. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so yeah, I also gave Ronan a score of zero. Next up are side characters. This has been such a big category for Bethany for pretty much all the movies. It's, you know, this is the one she gets more jazzed about. And I always have to kind of tone her down and be like, okay, we can't include everyone in this, in the side characters list. I'm still bitter about the dog. Yeah. She wanted to include the dog in The Incredible Hulk, which won't put Thanos in this one. And Thanos is a lot more critical in Guardians of the Galaxy than the dog was in The Incredible Hulk. He's just not a force in this film. He's the reason that Ronan's even going after the orb in the first place, which is the reason that Peter Quill, uh, you know, which was the reason Gamora goes after it, which introduces her to Star-Lord. So really, without Thanos, none of this really happens. Benicio Del Toro and Glenn Close got the shaft because of you. You can't, can't cut out Sam Rockwell. Remember that from Iron Man 2? We just cut out Glenn Close. I can't believe that. They were brilliantly featured characters. They weren't strong supporting. And for that reason, they didn't make the cut for side characters. Then why do you want to put Dr. Zola in The Winter Soldier? He was just AI and he was just a computer. But in The Winter Soldier, you wanted to have Dr. Zola in our side characters list. So why would he make it over The Collector, say? Or Thanos? Because it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> I got her! I got her on that one! <laughs> seemed like a good idea at the time. I was overruled there, but now, now we want to change the rules for we're, Thanos. We're not changing, yeah, oh yeah, just some bit character, this Thanos. So, moving on to the characters we did include, we obviously included the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Rocket, Drax, and Groot. We agreed on Corpsman Day, played by uh, John C. Riley, who was brilliant in this role. We also have Nebula, we have Yondu, and we have Korath. So Korath, I gave him a one. I say, is this really there for the plot? Korath, Nebula, and Yandu for me both go into a score of one. I gave Nebula a two, and I gave Yandu a two. So my twos went to Drax and to Groot. I gave Corpus Day a two, and I also gave Groot a two. Um, I thought Groot was gonna be my MCS in this one, uh, but he was funny, but he, I, I didn't think he was, maybe it's because I've seen it so many times, I, so I didn't laugh as much at, at, at Groot this time around. Uh, I really thought that he was there. I liked his relationship with Rocket so much and uh, you know like his relationship with uh, being part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Corpse from Day and Rocket. They both got a score of three. I said there isn't much humor in the movie without them. I thought they were fantastic, especially Rocket. I give Drax a three. He's, he, he provides a lot of humor in this film. Once again, Ken took some liberties on the score sheet. I ended up giving Rocket a five. He was my MCS and uh, it was surprising. At first I thought, oh yeah, Rocket's probably going to get a three, you know, he's super funny in this one. But it, when Groot goes down and Groot sacrifices himself and seeing what it does to Rocket and seeing how torn he is about, about Groot and losing his friend, his best friend, his only friend that he's had, you know, for however long they've been together, uh, that, was, that was really touching. And so, you know, Rocket had the heart and he had the humor. He's also got the brains. I mean, he's the one who comes up with all the plans for everything. Exactly, yeah. They wanted um, to take the prison without him. Yeah. And so, yeah, he, he's a very essential character. Um, so he gets a five. He's the most central side character. He's the MVP. Congratulations. And, and while I had him as a three, I wholeheartedly support this decision. That's nice. I finally get some support from my fiance. Next up is plot. So for plot, I gave it a score of three. I said it was deliciously unexpected. 
I gave it a score of four. I mean, there's no way I was getting up to go to the bathroom or look away from this movie. I was engaged and hooked the whole time. I like the characters. I like the humor. I like the dialogue. I like the action scenes. And I like the heart. And when you get all those, I mean, that's just a recipe for a great movie, so. Female empowerment. What role do women play in this film? So this one, I gave it a four. I thought Gamora was definitely a, a true hero. She's also strong. She's also badass. She's also not looking for love and, and all those typical, like, the girly nonsense that society tells us that we're supposed to expect for women. Um, so for this, I gave her a score of four. Nova Prime, another character, a very strong female character, and Nebula as well. So a lot of strong female leads. Yeah, this this movie was great in terms of a strong female cast. Um, still, it's a small cast compared to the number of men in the movie, but at least the females that we have are strong. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very key. Soundtrack. This movie is the reason that we have four in this, where it says, I'm going out and I'm buying that soundtrack, if that's still a thing. Because we did. We went out and we bought that soundtrack. I think we literally went out and bought it the day after we saw Guardians of the Galaxy. They found a way to make this absolutely fundamental to the character, to the story, and it's perfect. I mean, you want to dance when you hear it, you want to yeah. groove, you want to sing, you, I mean, Pumps like... you up, it's just, yeah. It, it... You really can't help but starting to, like, at least, like, tap your feet or, like, do a little... Not only was it great music, but it was just perfectly placed in all the scenes, too. Yes. I mean, so it just, it fit each scene perfectly. And, you know, I, I wouldn't think that Hooked on a Feeling and Pina Colada song would be something that, you know, would be, could fit into a Marvel superhero movie, but it does. It does. Humor. So far, this has been the funniest Marvel film. It's, I gave it a 66. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I give it a 53, so it perfectly matches my score for the Avengers. Yeah, I see it. I don't know. I think you're sandbagging this film a little bit, because there's some moments where I heard you laugh, and I didn't see you mark it you know, a sheet on there. I went back and one, I marked twice. No, there, yes. no, there was a couple yes. times you didn't do it. Uh, one with Gamora's Kevin Bacon line. You even laughed when I repeated it in, in my, in my, my review. Her, yes, <laughs> yes, I did, I did, because you're sandbagging this film. And Rocket, Rocket exiting the battleship, his little space ball when, after Star-Lord sacrificed himself, and he's kind of like fumbling off, he's kicking everything. You just like, you, you laughed then, you didn't, you didn't give him a sheet. So, no, I think, I think there were a couple times when, you know, I went back and I marked twice because sometimes I had the dog on me. I couldn't always lean forward. Like, you always, ex okay, we use the dogs for a lot of different excuses, all right? But that, come on, that's, that's, that's lame. That's lame. So next up are visual effects. And for me, I gave this a score of three. I said it's definitely big screen worthy. And I think that's fair. Uh, for me, I gave it a four. Groot's little flowers or whatever in, in the air, the lights. Yeah, that, that was great. Uh, I think Yanu's arrow zipping around was very visually appealing. It didn't blow me away. And the better that these Marvel movies get, the higher the bar becomes for a lot of these categories. And for that reason, a lot of times to give it the highest score, you're really looking for, did it blow me away? Moving on to the love story. I gave the love story a score of one. I said it puts a nice little bow on everything. Now the love story was probably one of the weaker elements of this film. Um, I got a two. I said it was believable at least. But really, they're kind of setting the foundation, um, the groundwork for Star-Lord and Gamora. I believe the chemistry. I don't believe that they're destined to be together. Next up is dialogue. So... We're in agreement. It's okay. a four. I am Groot. That's all needs to be said. Up next is action sequences. Now, there were five action sequences in this one. And uh, I gave it a three. I said that I couldn't believe what I was seeing in a good way. It gives it a total score of 15. Same thing for me. I, I also gave him a score of three. And for a very similar reason. It was... They were good, but now we've had great. So, yeah. good's good. It's like her, you know, before good was really good, but now she's had great, so nothing can compare after that. I've also had Captain America. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, you walked right into that one. <laughs> no, I thought I walked into a nice romantic moment where, you know, you would say yes. Which brings us to heart on that note. Yeah, yeah. on that note, let's talk about the lovey-dovey stuff. For heart, I gave it a four. I said it. Waters the eyes and warms the heart. That's the highest score I've given a film so far. I gave it a score of three. I said that, you know, I got a little misty eye, but it could be allergies. I got in trouble last time because I ra ranked something and I ranked it on having seen it in the past and the emotional response of crying every time I saw it in the past that didn't happen when I watched it this time. Well, I have a feeling I'm going to get in trouble this time for doing the complete opposite. If you're going to say that you're going to base it off of past experiences like you did in Captain America the Winter Soldier, then do that with all the films. But no, you're sandbagging Guardians of the Galaxy, so you gave it a lower score. I got in trouble for doing that. I was brutally mocked 
for doing that. I just want consistency across the board, all right? It also got a fist bump from me for the end when he says, you know, we are the Guardians of the Galaxy, bitch, and kills Ronan. Yeah, damn right. So my final score for the Guardians of the Galaxy was 147. I gave it a score of 122. Now, the real test is, what is our combined score? Well, if you have a calculator out, our combined score for Guardians of the Galaxy was 134.5. It barely edges out Avengers. By 0.5, it beats Avengers and takes the number one slot. And this is why your score and your scoring and rankings of this thing, using our ranking sheet, go to our, you know, you can fill it out online, you can download it, it matters. Because you submit your score to us, we factor it into our scoring system, and it can change things. You really could be the deciding factor, because for me, I think Guardians was a great movie. I don't think it's necessarily better than Avengers. So go ahead and post your score for Guardians of the Galaxy down below in the comments. Our score was 134.5. But that is definitely not definitive.